right, on to my buddy Randy Carricker. Here we go. He has left an indelible mark on the St. Louis sports scene. His passion for sports is contagious, and his distinctive voice is recognizable to all sports fans. So whether you've tuned into his radio shows or spotted him at a game, Randy Carricker is a true sports aficionado. And I can tell you, he's just one hell of a guy. He's awesome. His induction tonight is a fitting tribute to the passion, the banner, the memories he's woven into our hearts. He's the guy who makes us cheer, debate, feel the pulse of St. Louis sports. Please welcome to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame, with your applause, Randy Carricker. Now, you usually get to do the interviewing. I get to do this. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm humbled and honored uh, with the, the people that are going in tonight, my fellow inductees, and all the media members that you and I grew up following with Jack Buck and Dan Deardorff and Ron Jacober and Bob Costas, all those other fellow broadcasters that are in the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Truly humbling. Now, don't forget to uh, thank your family. Uh, my family is here. My wife, Joan, is sitting there along with my oldest, my son Patrick, and his significant other, Alyssa. My sister Lori is there, and my daughter Katie, plus my radio family. I've got Brooke Grimsley and her husband David here, Matthew Rocchio, our producer, and of course, you. So I've got, I've got both families here. I feel like Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> Keep it clean, Randall. Um, how many years? How many years have you been doing this? 41 years in radio. I started in 1983 while I was going to Lindenwood. Is this what you always wanted to do? Yeah, from the time I figured out I was a terrible athlete, which was in eighth grade, I listened to KMOX. I listened to Sports Open Line every night when I was a kid. Back in that, those days, we listened in the kitchen. We had radios in the house and listened in the kitchen. And I just fell in love with the idea of being able to do what Bill Wilkerson and Bob Costas and Bob Burns and Bob Bragg uh, and, and obviously Jack and Dan uh, did, and uh, whether it was doing games or talking about games, I just fell in love with competition. You love sports. I do, and even now I, I'm bewildered that people in our industry will leave sports to do something else because I can't imagine losing that desire, the, the, the hunger for being around competition and talking to the people that are are competing. I've always looked at myself as a fan with access. I didn't play. I don't bring that credibility to the to the table. But I can talk to the people that do and hopefully ask the questions and maybe glean some knowledge that I can pass along. What did Jack Buck mean to you? Um, he was my biggest booster and my biggest mentor. When I started doing the post-game sports open lines on KMOX, uh, I, my first job when I was at Lindenwood, was producing the noon af uh, Saturday afternoon open line with Bob Burns and Bob Bragg, whom I dearly loved. But they would take a phone call, and somebody would say, hey, why don't the Cardinals trade for Mike Schmidt? And Bob Burns would say, well, where are you going to play him? Uh, we, we were very critical in those days. Well, in 1990, after Gussie died, the Cardinals lost interest in baseball, and they were letting, uh, and it gave inductee tonight, Ray Langford is uh, one of his opportunities, but they were letting Terry Pendleton walk out the door. They were letting Vince Coleman walk out the door. They were letting Ken Daly walk out the door. Uh, some other really good players, they traded Willie McGee. And so I was pretty critical of, of the team on the flagship station uh, yep. of the team. And Jack Buck would uh, either call me or I would call him. We didn't have cell phones, so he'd call me in our little studio at Bush Stadium. And I'd say, what did you think? And he'd say, were you fair? And I said, yeah, I think so. And he said, I thought you were fair, too. And so uh, to get that stamp of approval for him, from him was huge because I grew up listening to him and just learned so much about uh, handling, being, and having the platform that we have, uh, using it for charity, using it for good things, and understanding that we're, we are in the toy store of life with, with sports and to have fun with it. What does St. Louis mean to you? I know this is an important town to you. It's, uh, St. Louis has always treated me kind of like their little brother. Um, when I got laid off in 96 at KMOX, Norma Walner, the late receptionist there, who had been there forever, said, we got more calls about you getting laid off than we've ever gotten about anybody else or anything else. And that's one of the reasons they brought me back uh, a, a month later. And 
Uh, I just, I want, I, I root for St. Louis. I rooted for the St. Louis football Cardinals. I rooted, rooted for the St. Louis Rams. I root for the St. Louis Blues. I root for the St. Louis Cardinals. I, I root for St. Louis. And uh, it really, uh, I, I care so much about us doing well from a sports standpoint. That's why I said what I said uh, a decade ago over at uh, the, uh, the Stiefel Center, uh, because I, I wanted us, we deserve... Be, to have teams because we are a spectacular sports town. But in addition to being a spectacular, the best sports town in America, in my opinion, uh, we're just a great town. And so uh, the, the fact that everybody has their back, everybody cares about each other is really meaningful to me. And that's why going into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame is as big as anything that I'll ever be awarded. Do you have a favorite moment that you covered? I, I've got two. Can I give you two? Yeah, yeah we got time. Uh, I, I'm not one to have retroactive uh, emotional changes. The night that McGuire hit number 62 was unbelievable. The anticipation, the crowd, the thunder when he hit it, uh, it, it was just magical. And we'd anticipated it from the time he got here in 1997. So for him to hit uh, number 62, 9, 8, 98 was amazing. And then the other one for me, and I can't get tired of watching this on YouTube, is the very first touchdown that the St. Louis team scored in the very first NFL playoff game here in St. Louis. Uh, for Isaac Bruce to catch that touchdown pass from Kurt Warner, and uh, Jimmy Thomas knows. Uh, Jim is here. He's going to talk to Steven Jackson. But uh, Dick Vermeil was saying, here's what our first play is going to be. And then for them to score on that first play was remarkable. And then I didn't get a chance to cover the, the Blues Stanley Cup. But I'll tell you this, uh, in 2012, our producer was Michelle Smallman, who's now doing the national show on ESPN Radio before we come on the air. And she was goading me into uh, um, doing something if the Blues won the Stanley Cup. And finally, I reached a point. We had actually... We had found a place where we could buy black salt on the dark web and mirrors and buckets so that we could go break the curse over at Enterprise Center. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, the blue, and she's, 2012, she said, you know what, if the Blues win the Stanley Cup, you should get a tattoo. I said, no, I'm not getting a tattoo. She said, yeah, you should. You should get a tattoo if the Blues win the Stanley Cup. I said, no, I'm not going to. Well, finally, she just pounded me, me enough, and I said, hell, they're never going to win a Stanley Cup. So, uh, sure, I'll get a tattoo if the Blues win the Stanley Cup. Lo and behold, seven years later, we're at the Blues Stanley Cup parade, and literally every other person that knows me, that runs into me, says, hey, Randy, when are you getting the ink? Randy, when are you getting the tattoo? They, because she had talked about it for such a long time, and uh, <laughs> I've never been forgiven at home for having a giant Blues Stanley Cup arch tattoo on my la left shoulder. And for the first time in St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame history... <laughs> We're going to have an unveiling of a tattoo, so Randy, go right ahead. <laughs> no, it's, no not, not now. It's, uh, uh, you, you can see pictures on the interwebs, though. <laughs> Final thing, you do so much in this town for so many people, people like myself, so thank you, um, and so much for charity. What are you most proud of as you reflect upon your career? Well, number one, that I have been able to use that platform, and I think you and I would make Jack proud. Jack? spent a lot of time, a lot of nights away from home when he wasn't doing baseball or football, uh, doing charitable events. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. But the biggest thing is not talking on the radio. It's having people like Dan McLaughlin or Chris Kerber or Greg Amzinger from MLB Network or Joe Lamey, who's the assignment editor, editor over at Channel 2, or Scott Adamack, who runs the uh, charitable foundation over at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. All those people that Scott Warman over at Fox Sports, uh, Bally Sports, sorry, Patrick. Uh, all those people that were interns for me, Mike Caruso, Blues Vice President, that tell me that I had an impact on them, and they've made it. I, I love seeing young people advance, and that's what I'm most proud of is when you say on the air or tell me in private or, or Greg or Chris or uh, any, any of those young people that I had the opportunity to cross paths with that have succeeded, if I can help them in any little way, I'm very, very proud of that. I'll say it in public. He's the best, the absolute best. Randy Carricker, welcome you, to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Appreciate it. Love Thank you, buddy. You.